welcome to Salt Church, another video presentation for this Sunday the 3rd of May and we are really happy that you are able to join us. We really hope and pray that you will be blessed and encouraged as you watch and listen. And um, we know that now we're uh, seven weeks complete in Spain in our lockdown and we still have a ways to go but God never changes, he is still faithful so be encouraged this morning. Yes, Salt Church and anybody else who's watching, we hope that you would find uh, this uh, series of Living Life in Lockdown. This is the second one in the series that you will find it encouraging and uplifting. You'll find the principles helpful and that uh, you will do all that you can to put them into practice for helping all of us to live life in lockdown in a positive way. Blessed be your name, the land that is plentiful, with streams of abundance flow, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, when found in the desert place, when I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Your name, when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, on the road marked with suffering, with pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name.
your presence this morning with such grateful and thankful hearts. We're so thankful for you being with us at this time. Lord, we're so thankful that we've got homes to live in and we've got food on the table. Father, we just bring before you our friends and our families who are far away and we pray your protection upon them and we thank you for keeping them safe. We pray for our church family and we thank you for them and we pray again protection and that you will keep us safe. We thank you for the technology Father that you've given to us and the people that are operating it that's keeping us in contact with one another. Father we are so grateful for all of these things. Father we thank you for the people that are on the front line that are keeping us well and healthy, that are distributing food and taking away our rubbish. Father, you know who they are, the, the seen ones and the unseen ones. We thank you for them. Father, we pray also for um, the men and the women and the children, Father, that are locked away <clears throat> and that are in an abusive situation. Father, although we cannot see and we cannot hear their cry, we have a God that does hear them. We have a God that does see what is going on. And we look to you, Father, that you will shine your light in these dark places. And we pray, Father, that you will give the authorities the knowledge that they need to bring these people out into freedom. Father, you are a loving God. You are a faithful God. You are a patient God. And we are looking to you during this time, this difficult time for a lot of people. Father, there's a lot of people out there that are afraid. And it's a very uncertain time. But Father, we pray that during this time, the Holy Spirit might be moving on men and women's lives, children's lives, turning the hearts and the minds to the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that many will come into a wonderful relationship with our Saviour. Father God, we pray for those as well who are testing for vaccines. Father, you've already placed the answer when you created this wonderful world of ours. So, Father, all we have to do is to discover it. So we pray for the people who are working hard behind the scenes that soon there will be a vaccine and soon we can get back to normal living. But most of all, we thank you, Lord Jesus, we thank you that you saved us. Father, we thank you for giving us your son. And thank you, Father, that we come, come into your presence with our prayers and our supplications, knowing that you hear us. And we put our full trust in you this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame. And of you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love. 
Continue with our attitude of gratitude. Let's hear what Chris has to say to us. Well, good day and buenos dias, and welcome to this video from Salt Church. I'm Pastor Chris, and a great welcome to all the saints of God who might be joining in with us uh, on this video. We are currently in a mini series called Living Life in Lockdown. And I'm pleased to say that we've heard recently in Spain that some restrictions are being lifted, that the Spanish government have a four point plan to de-escalate the lockdown and to bring some form of normality back to society. And we want to pray for the government right at the start that the Lord Jesus would rule over them, that they would have wisdom, that they would have courage of their conviction, but they would seek to do all the right things to keep the population safe. Father, we thank you for all those in governments around the world dealing in stressful situations that this COVID-19 has brought upon the world. Lord, we do ask for your wisdom. Well, I'm pleased to say that we're probably even out walking this very uh, weekend this week, and hopefully very soon we'll be even able to go back to meeting in the church building. And of course, people uh, will be making plans, pastors and teams and uh, count church councils will be making plans to be able to come back into the building for proper church services. So watch this space, we'll see how things develop. In my last video, I raised four biblical principles to help us to live life in lockdown. And they were first, affirmation, to affirm ourselves and to affirm others. And affirmation is like an umbrella that covers us with the love and the power of Jesus to affirm ourselves and others. And we often choose words from the Bible and speak uh, sentences that Jesus said about how much he loves us to build us up. And that's got to be a, a very good general start to living life in lockdown. We all said the phrase, I am great because of the great I am. Second principle was, I will not give way to worry, fear or worst case scenario thinking. 
The third thing we said was, I will look for the silver lining. There is always something positive to focus on, even when things are very difficult. So I will seek out the silver lining. And fourth, we said that we would feed our spirit with a healthy diet of daily Bible reading, prayer and taking communion. Today, I want to look at another four biblical principles, and they are, I will remember to give thanks. I will give grace to myself and to others. I will explore how I can help in such difficult times. And finally, I will resolve myself to prayer and the breaking of bread. Now notice that each of the principles starts with the words, I will. Now Jesus is the great I am, the eternal God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. He is a constant and will never change. He is the source and sustainer of all things. We said, I am great because of the great I am. However, whilst God is constant and never changes, we do and can change. We can be up, we can be down, and sometimes we can go sideways. God has given us the ability of freedom of choice to say, I will, I will do it. We call this power the human will or free will. He or she is strong-willed and it shows in actions. Our will refers to our capacity to actively decide what to do instead of reacting automatically to stimuli. Our will inevitably involves choices. And what is in our internal will will come out of our mouths and be said, and it will be seen in our actions, in our behaviour. I will follow Jesus all the days of my life. At the end of our life, we will know if we did this. I will is an action word. It is a statement of intent. I will cook you a nice dinner in lockdown. I will do some DIY in lockdown. I will do this and I will do that. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, simply let your yes be yes and your no be no. God cares about our intentions and keeps his advice to us simple. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. I will do it or I will not do it. Whenever we say the words I will, we are really saying yes to what we will do and therefore we should do it. So let us briefly look at the four I wills for today's Bible principles on living life in lockdown. First, I will remember to give thanks. When we seek to magnify what is praiseworthy in our lives, we will inevitably uncover things to be thankful for. Giving thanks to God is not just a natural response to his goodness, it is one of our most important Christian responsibilities. God is good and he loves us. There is much to give thanks for. We want to magnify his name. So, I will give him thanks for every good thing, however big or however small, that I experience. James, the brother of Jesus, said this, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. This verse tells us we can trust God. His love for us is consistent. God will not change. God is in control. And that is very comforting when everything seems to be out of control. God is still in control. When we give thanks daily for all the good stuff, it helps us to keep those blessings in the forefront of our minds. Doing this every day will ground us in God in difficult circumstances and will lift our spirits as we see just how God is good and, and how much we must be thankful for. As a great summary of this point, I will give thanks. The writer of Thessalonians said this. 
Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. The second I will principle is this. I will give grace to myself and to others. Confined spaces mean we need more grace. It is so easy to get on top of each other. It is all too easy to rub each other up the wrong way. It is vital we hold short accounts of all the niggles and that we are quick to show grace. Grace is showing favour to someone when they do not deserve it. It's not easy to do all the time, but we all need to receive grace and therefore we all need to give grace. Even for those who are on their own and are really missing the company of other people, you still need to give yourself grace. Some of us can be just too hard on ourselves. Jesus said this, blessed are the peacemakers. All of us can try to sow a peaceful seed when we might otherwise be offended in this season of lockdown. Let us be slow to take offence, but quick to give grace. We can breathe in God's grace and exhale the times when we fall short. I will give grace to myself and to others. The third in our Bible principles for living life in lockdown is this. I will help. It is so easy to be inward looking at times like these, but it's times like these that can bring out the best in us. Amidst overwhelming need, we can look for creative ways in which we can give. Captain Tom Moore, the World War II veteran, has raised more than £29 million for the NHS in the UK and his initial target was a mere £1,000. He was 100 years old on April the 30th this past week and he received over 125,000 birthday cards. What an inspiration Captain Tom Moore has been to the United Kingdom and we all need such inspirations. I will help. It's an amazing story of what can happen and what will happen when we have that positive attitude. I will help. I will have a go. Timothy reminds us. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love and of self-discipline. Sometimes we just need that starting oomph God has not given us a spirit of timidity. He has made us strong and powerful and passionate people to have a go. Pick up the phone to someone that you might think is lonely. Write that email. Think about what you can do as more freedoms come about. There is going to be plenty of need out there. It's not going to be normal anytime soon. Indeed, has it ever been normal? God has given us all that we need to step out in faith and his power and to have a go. Our third principle is, I will help. As a final principle, prayer and communion really do go together. It was great to share recently uh, over a Zoom video conference, the whole of Salt Church, as many as could join, sharing in Holy Communion at that time. Both prayer and communion are acts of our spiritual praise to God. So fourthly, I will pray and break bread. Prayer opens the door to divine intervention and communion opens the door to divine participation. Paul wrote this to the Corinthian church. He who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. We join hands with each other whenever we are the body of Christ when we pray. Maybe not physically at this time in lockdown, but spiritually we are family and we are God's body on earth. And we join in the spiritual participation of the body when we take communion. Wherever we are, even if we are alone, Jesus is with us and we still participate. 
we are united in the body of the Lord and so we are united with each other, particularly when we pray and take communion. I encourage you to listen again to our communion videos on the website and to use them if you want to share in communion wherever you are and whenever you want to. Jesus reminds us of the power of prayer when we come together. For where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. Prayer gives us a vehicle to enlist God's participation and protection for those who are working on the front line. We can petition God for peace for those who are mourning, who are sick. We can acknowledge the current suffering and the economic hardship and we can unleash the full measure of God's delivering work through our collective voices. Here is one prayer that we can say and that we can be thankful for. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. God has the power to rescue us when we feel we are drowning in circumstances, when we feel that we are in over our head. God can rescue us from the effects and fears of coronavirus. And I know our prayers are affecting people. There are testimonies being wrought as we speak. God will bring us into a spacious place. What a wonderful words that is from that reading. And boy, do we need a spacious place right now. And I believe the spacious place will be physical as this lockdown eases. And at the same time, I believe God will give us new spaces to be in as his church reaching out to new people in new places, in new spaces. Things are going to be different for quite a while after this. And I believe that God is on the move. New spaces will open up to us. God's word will reach a wider audience. Jesus will build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So to conclude, I will give thanks for everything good and right and holy in my life. I will give grace to myself and to others and will not take offence easily. I will find ways to help and to be helpful. And finally, I will continue to cover everything in prayer, to break bread and to drink the cup of Jesus and to remember him and to also remember my brothers and sisters in Christ with whom I am in unity. God bless. Amen. These are the days of Elijah declaring the word of the Lord and these are the days of your servant Moses righteousness being restored and though these are days of great trial a famine and darkness and sword still we are the voice in the desert crying Love the 